Hi guys, today we're going to talk about products that I am no longer buying. And there are 10 of them that I could think of off the top of my head. We're going to start with beauty and a lot of this is like eco-conscious. Um, you may remember last year I talked about easy swaps that you could make uh, in your beauty routine that were a little bit more eco-friendly and some of these do kind of overlap with that video. If you've seen that you will have heard me talk about some of these. But we're almost a year on from that and so it's interesting to see which things I've actually stuck with. Um, and I think all of them, I think, but I'm going to need to go back and check. Number one, sheet masks. I have stopped using sheet masks completely. I have to say, I don't use that rubber sheet mask as much as I thought that I would. You can get kind of a silicone sheet mask. Um, it's not fun. It's just not fun. Um, it's not super comfortable to wear. And the whole thing about a sheet mask was the ease and the just being able to kind of pull it out and throw it on your face and lie down and just absolutely zero effort whatsoever. I have to make sure the silicone mask is clean. I have to go and apply my thing. Then I put, it just feels like more effort. It's not just like, oh, I'll take this sheet mask with me wherever it is that I'm going to go and put this on. And you know, I feel immediately like I want to go and put the sheet mask on now I'm talking about it. I just don't even think about it anymore. I wear more regular masks, um, actual kind of face masks that I apply with a brush. Um, but sheet masks used to be my kryptonite. I was obsessed. I don't use them anymore because the whole single use thing. Um, I know that some of them are biodegradable, but the majority of the packaging is still not great. And I know that even with the masks that I'm using, the packaging is still single use packaging, but it's not a single use product. Baby steps. Two, disposable razors. Now, if you watch my vlogs, you will know that not that long ago, my husband bought me some disposable razors. Um, and they're the first disposable razors that I've had in possibly over a year? I don't know. I bought myself a safety razor and razor blades. Uh, if you want a specific video on this, I know I said at the time, but I don't know whether or not people are really that interested in a video just about the safety razor. But if you are, let me know. Um, so basically it's like a metal razor. I unscrew it. I put in a new razor blade and I use it. It's like a, a solid razor thing. Um, there's no plastic involved. When I get new razor blades, I can get them. They all kind of come in a cardboard thing and they are like 100 for like 10 pounds or something crazy. So not only is it super, super cheap, um, way better for the environment, but also absolutely no razor burn. It's incredible. It does take a little bit of getting used to. I do still nick myself from time to time, but even the nicks that I get aren't as bad as they were when I nicked myself with disposable razors. And I can't explain to you, I used to get such bad razor burn. And when my husband bought me these disposable razors recently, it was because we'd just gone into lockdown. I was working from home with the kids at home and I was so stressed out, just incredibly stressed all the time. I just felt so tired and drained. And one day I said to my husband, I can't, I can't summon the energy to shave my legs because it is a bigger job with a safety razor. I have to kind of like stand at the bath, I have to put the oil on. It's not just like a quick whatever. Um, because sometimes I wouldn't even use I use like maybe a little bit of shower gel something, but it's just easier with a disposable razor. Anyway, he came home with disposable razors the next day and I was so happy because I just could not face. I was, I can't explain it. You know, sometimes you, you make something a bigger thing than it is. It becomes an overwhelming thing and it shouldn't be, it doesn't need to be. It's not that big of a thing, um, but it becomes a big thing in your mind. So that was this. Um, I used the disposable razors and within 24 hours, I was just full of razor bumps. It was so bad. So I've gone back to my regular razors. I'm kind of feeling better in myself now. It was just kind of a, a mini crisis at the beginning of all of this. And I can't, I can't speak highly enough about it. It just is so much better for my skin. Um, taking everything else out of there, it's one, much cheaper. Two, I get a fresh blade much more often, and three, it is definitely better for my sensitive skin, which I didn't even think that I really had until I realized that it didn't have to be razor burny and bumpy all the time. Um, nail polish. So, recently I've been painting my own nails because we can't go anywhere. Um, I used to be obsessed with nail polish. I had racks and racks and racks and racks, loads of nail polish, drawers full. Um, some of you remember from back in the day, I had my own nail polish rack made. It was like, a whole thing. I loved nail polish. And I still have got a small collection of nail polish. Mostly I've kept it for my toes because usually I have acrylics now 
And I have to say, I've been enjoying my short nails. I had been thinking for a while that I may go to gels instead of the acrylics because it's not like I'm super into having the super long nails, but I really enjoy not having to think about my nails for a really long time. Gels don't tend to last on me, historically. Um, they've still peeled and, and chipped and stuff. Um, and nail polish chips really, really quickly on me. Even with, I do everything, everything. I've got all the tools, all the best top coats and base coats and... I don't know, it just, it just chips really badly. So acrylics were just a complete game changer because it meant once every like four or five weeks I would go have them done and for an entire month, I didn't even have to think about having my nails done, whether or not they looked good. I kept them long because then when they grew out, they didn't look quite as crazy. Um, and I kept them neutral for the same reason. Um, so I'm really missing having my nails done because it's just like another chore. But it's also made me realize how much money I must have spent on nail polish over the years. Because I used to just, every time I went into the shops, if I wanted to paint my nails, I wanted a new nail polish. I had, must have had hundreds and hundreds of bottles. Um, and so although I spend money on my nails being done now, I don't even feel bad about it because I must have spent so much over the years anyway. And I don't buy that anymore. I'm just not excited about it. I'll buy a red nail polish for my toes when my red nail polish for my toes runs out. I buy Sesh Feet because it's the best top coat of all time. And again, just for my toes. But I'm not even counting that because I don't buy, I must have bought like five or six bottles a month. It felt like just so much nail polish. Face scrubs. So this is since uh, the discovery of any kind of acids. So it started with Alpha H, the liquid gold. I have a decent amount of pigmentation. In fact, once this is all over, I'm definitely going to have, um, this reminds me of, you know, and You Got Mail, if you've seen it, when Tom Hanks' girlfriend's stuck in the lift and she says, if I ever get out of here, I'm having my eyes lasered. Um, there's a bit, a patch of pigmentation kind of growing here. I've got some here, here. I'm going to get it lasered again because I had a little bit kind of a tester patch there and it was really effective. So I'm just going to get every little bit of pigmentation done at some point. Um, but the recovery, it looks crazy. So I'm gonna have to have a few days off work. I will do it when I know I've got a few days off work so that I don't have to worry about like going outside looking like really, really scabby. Um, how did we even get onto the subject? Alpha H. So that's why I started using Alpha H liquid gold because it's supposed to be amazing for pigmentation and evening out your skin. Now I use things like Pixi Glow Tonic um, and other dupes of Pixi Glow Tonic. Uh, so I never use manual face scrubs anymore. Occasionally I will use like a microdermabrasion treatment or I will use a mask that's got something scrubby in it, but I never ever ever buy a face scrub. Um, I was recently working with Aldi and they sent me a face scrub and I used it and I totally get it if you are not, if you've got very dry skin or very um, textured skin and you feel like you're not getting enough from your cleanse and your flannel or your whatever else you're using, I completely understand the feeling that you need the face scrub, I get it. But I just didn't feel that I needed it. I used it and was like, no. I'm getting enough from the flannel, from the hot cloth cleanser and like the muslin cloth. I'm getting enough from my um, liquid kind of toner acid type products. I just never, I'm not even remotely excited to look at face scrubs anymore, so I never buy them. And the last beauty product is foot masks. Ah, oh, same reason that I don't use the sheet masks. I used to have, they were like bags. Um, if you've never used one before, they were amazing, but I'm trying my best just remove the things that I can remove. Um, they were like little socks that you would put on, little plastic socks. You put them on, very cute, not cute at all. Wrap them around your feet and it was like, um, basically like a foot cream, but you were putting your feet in plastic bags afterwards and so it was really intensive foot cream. Amazing, loved it so much. Um, wouldn't recommend, because it's not a great thing for the environment, but would ask if there is a good alternative to that, beyond socks, I want something like, like a reusable version of this. What can I use? Now I've got five things that are non-beauty things. Um, number one is books. Now I don't know if this counts, but I think it does. I used to buy a lot of books, I used to read a lot of books. I used to um, take a lot of train journeys and I used to read a lot. And I don't do that anymore because I love Audible. <laughs> I've, I've mentioned Audible many times. Um, I think there's always an audible code of some kind in my um, description bar. I'm not directly affiliated with them, but you, I do get a kickback if you use that code, um, but I'm not sponsored by them in any way, shape or form. I have been subscribing to Audible for about three years. 
I've purchased the extra credits to get extra books. I am obsessed and I use it all the time. And especially right now, I like to have my headphones on when I'm working from home. I like to have my headphones on and be listening to something to kind of just block everything out because it's difficult with a house full of people and especially with the kids home. But my mum and dad are here. Everyone's kind of here, there and everywhere. And it's a lot. And I work on the landing. So I just like to block everything out and it is the best way. An audiobook is amazing. Um, love podcasts as well, but I don't buy physical books anymore. I've got just boxes and boxes of them that I just can't face giving away, which is ridiculous. I think when we do come to move next, I'm going to have to just give away the books. Um, I, I, it's too much. I don't have places to store these books. And um, so even if I really, really wanted a physical book now, I probably would still get it on like as an ebook or something because it's just they take up space and I'm not a massive, um, you know, people that need the physical, I don't need the physical book really, do I? No, I like to look at the pictures, but I could still do that with an ebook. Candles, 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 used to be obsessed. Um, occasionally I'll still buy tea lights, does that count? I don't know. But what I mean is more, I used to go to America and buy so many candles from Bath and Body Works and I gave myself a budget when we went to New York in January. Um, a decent budget because I have spent a lot of money in Bath and Body Works before um, and I didn't buy one candle. I didn't buy anything from Bath and Body Works but I didn't buy one candle and I mentioned this on in Instagram at the time. I mentioned this in the vlogs and people could not believe I hadn't bought one candle and I'm trying to think now. I did again, I bought some Yankee Candle tea lights. I mentioned that in my, what I bought during my no buy, oxymoron. Um, but it just was, I can't believe I, I just, God, even now, I can't believe I didn't buy any candles. I'm using up the ones that I've got. I am moving back into kind of wax melts, so maybe tea lights occasionally, but I just used to be completely obsessed with candles and I'm not anymore. I, it's just too, again, I had so many, it was taking up so much space. I'm not as excited to light a candle anymore. I want to find a similar, you know, like when you give up drinking for a spell and you want to find a thing that replaces that ritual. I want to find a thing that replaces the ritual of burning a candle. What thing can I have that you like, you do something, you turn something on, what could replace that? Because I really don't miss candles, but I miss that ritual. Travel accessories. This is one that when I was sitting to think about the things that I don't purchase, the things that I specifically force myself not to purchase versus the things that I don't purchase because I don't care about them. Um, most of the things on this list are things that I have decided I am not buying anymore. Um, rather than like, you know, I don't even miss it. <laughs> most are like an actual effort not to purchase these things. Um, I think the things that I don't miss, I'm not even remembering. So maybe we'll do another one of these when I like absentmindedly think of extra things to add to that list. Um, but travel accessories, but leading up to a holiday, I would always spend loads of money. And so for the past few years, or the past like 18 months or so, every time we've been going away, I've given myself the month before as a no buy. Cannot buy anything that month because I know that is the time that I will spend the most money. I need an extra item of clothing or an outfit or a pair of shoes or um, the camera I've got isn't good enough. And so I need something to go with that camera or I need some travel accessory of some kind because... So basically, I am trying my very, very, very best to stop myself from purchasing any kind of travel accessories. I have everything, everything. I've got, or at least I've had and gotten rid of because I didn't use everything, but I've got travel wallets. I've got travel accessories as in um, accessorizers. I was like, places to put everything. Uh, every kind of makeup bag you could possibly imagine. You do not need another makeup bag ever, ever again. I've got electronics organisers. Just, I don't need any more travel accessories. And yet it's the most fun to shop for anything where you're looking forward to a holiday and you're like, ooh, maybe I'll get this. Ooh, what about on the plane? And then, 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 then. No, this is, it, it's a slippery slope and I'll end up spending so much more money than I want to. And I would rather have that money on holiday. And so travel accessories is now on my do not purchase list. We're almost at the end and we are kind of slightly moving on from that last one and it is any kind of camera and lighting equipment. Um, for years I have spent slash wasted a lot of money. I've got I, countless tripods, countless. So many tripods, so many versions of lights, so many cameras, so many lenses, so many microphones that I never use, so many things and I've just 
no, no more. Everything that I have in this house is enough to do what I need to do on YouTube. The quality of an iPhone these days is so amazing that no one really needs an SLR camera to create videos on YouTube. The light ring is, I mean, I'm using a light ring right now. It's useful. It means that I can film in different areas of the house. It means I can film in the nighttime. It means I can film when it's dull outside and it gives me continuous lighting that's not like dipping in and out all the time. That is useful. Pretty much everything else you can do without. I have external microphones that I literally never use because every single time I try to use them, something goes wrong and then the whole video is pointless because the audio doesn't work. The audio on this camera is fine. I can play with it in editing it's fine. The audio on every camera I've had has pretty much been fine and editable if need be. It's completely unnecessary and if you are creating content, if you are at home and you've been like, I'm gonna start a YouTube channel because I'm home and you know, why not? That seems to be the thing to do. You don't need anything. You've got a phone. You've got a phone. You've got a phone. You've got a phone. We don't need all of this fancy equipment we have been indoctrinated to think that everything needs to be high production value and like everything needs to be like TV and it doesn't, that is the beauty of YouTube. It is just normal people and it's a bit rough and ready. Last thing is living room decor. And I watched another video that was talking about um, what they didn't buy and someone said this and I was like, yes, yes. I have definitely stopped buying living room decor and souvenirs, which she mentioned, and I'm gonna kind of throw into this as well. Um, I, again, I'm not a minimalist at all, not even slightly. I hate clutter, but I'm a cluttered kind of person. I'm not a tidy person. And so I realized after watching so many videos that if you've got lots of things on the side and then you put down a mug, immediately everything on the side looks like a mess. If you've got nothing on the side and you put down a mug, it just looks like a mug. And so the more clutter that you have on your sides, the easier it is for everything to look. Even if it's like really carefully placed, beautiful things, once you put something down that doesn't belong there, everything looks like clutter, everything looks messy, everything looks like just you haven't bothered. Um, and so I have definitely stopped buying knickknacks and things to lay around places. Um, we have been, I mean, mugs I was going to almost put in here, but I know I'll never stop buying mugs. I really do need to stop buying mugs because I've got nowhere to put mugs and glasses. There's only so many spaces. <laughs> We've got to put these things. I don't have the space to put these things. Um, when we're away, I really try now, when I'm looking at kind of souvenirs and things to bring home, where am I going to put this thing? And immediately, as soon as I get it home, I'm going to be like, oh, I don't want this anymore. I've bought so many ornaments and things over the years that are just now shoved in little corners of places wherever I can fit them and it's just taking up space and making it look messier than it already is and because I'm a messy person it's not if everything was really neat all the time and really tidy and clean and beautiful then it would be one thing but if you are an untidy person you need to start with as clear a sides as you possibly can because once you add that one thing everything everything is a nightmare and that was 10 things that I am not buying anymore Either I am not buying or I just am not buying because it's just, I've replaced these things in my life. Um, let me know some things that you have decided not to purchase anymore or some things that you've dis just discovered that you've stopped purchasing. Um, and maybe, would you be interested in maybe doing like a clothing version of this or like a follow-up if I think of more things? Um, kind of naturally I'll start making a list. I don't know, I know this was a long one, but every video was a long one. Um, but otherwise... Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already and you've made it this far into the video, please subscribe um, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.